Jimbalaya, your host for Math and Science Gumbo. Now that we have our groceries home, we're going to see how to preserve our food and see what changes when we do. After spending all that money, we don't want to waste what we bought because it spoils. Along the way, we'll learn about physical changes, chemical changes, units of measurement, volume, and safety. For instance, canning volume stays the same, while dehydration volume decreases roughly by about half. One of the most common ways to preserve food today is freezing. We can keep food fresh sometimes for months by wrapping it tightly or vacuum sealing it. Like this, you know, to keep air away from it. And then we toss it in the freezer. You may not know this, but humans have been refrigerating and freezing food since prehistoric times in ice caves. <laughs> Mechanical refrigeration was invented in 1842 by inventor John Gorey, but it didn't catch on commercially until the 1870s and Clarence Birdseye started quick freezing in the 1920s. Followed 30 years later by the amazing invention of the TV dinner. Foods like this need to be refrigerated or frozen. So, what happens to food when we freeze or refrigerate it? Well, storing foods at lower freezing temperatures slows many enzymatic reactions that cause foods to spoil. How? Well, by reducing but not killing the growth rate of microorganisms. To keep this kind of growth to a minimum, your refrigerator should be set between 32 to 40 degrees, and your freezer needs to be set below 32 degrees. Now, one of the disadvantages of freezing is that water in food expands, forming ice crystals. And when this happens, the cells are disturbed, causing food to have a softer texture when they get thawed. So, how do food processing professionals minimize this problem? By faster freezing! <laughs> By faster freezing! Oops, sorry about that. Here it is, one can of Instafreeze. Oh, thank you. Right on time. How much are we paying you? See you soon. This is the procreation period, right here. Pre Parasic, pre Germain, and maybe Tito. Another interesting way to preserve food is dehydration. Dehydrating takes the liquid out of the food like these dried apricots or beef jerky. Beef jerky, what Indians call beef jerky. Usually the final product is about half the weight you start with. And I know this from personal experience with beef jerky. Drying can be even less. You dry foods using the sun, the oven, or a dehydrator. Or you can take a shortcut and open up a bag. One thing you can do is make fruit leather, like these fruit roll-ups. So, how do you turn this into this? Well, if you want to try making your own fruit leathers, you can get this and other great recipes from our website. In any case, there are several different ways to turn fresh fruit into leather. You can dry your leather in the oven, use a dehydrator, or use that great dehydrator in the sky, the sun. Now don't try the sun drying method unless you're someplace like Arizona. You need 90 degree dry weather to use the sun. For safety, if you dry the fruit in the sun, be sure to cover it with a fine mesh screen or cheesecloth, you know, to keep the bugs away. Most of us don't own dehydrators, so I use the oven. When you dry food in the oven, make sure you leave a crack in the oven door. And you can do this by placing a cloth in the door. Why? Well, this is important. You see, this allows the evaporated moisture to escape. That's dehydration. I set the oven for 140 degrees. Oven drying takes two to three times longer than a dehydrator. You can also dehydrate in the back of a car on the window. This works for fruit roll-ups. Anything you dry in nature should be covered with a screen with small holes or cheesecloth. You can also preserve food by canning. Everything from peppers to applesauce can be canned, either by commercial canners or at home. See, people have been preserving food this way at home for hundreds of years. 
using water bath canning for vegetables like tomatoes and pickles or pressure canning for foods like beans and meat. There are two methods for canning. One is hot packing. Now that's where the food is heated thoroughly before it's packed into the jars. One other method is cold packing for things like jams, jellies, and soft fruits. Cold packing is when raw food is placed in the jars. Now in both cases, once the food is in the jars, the jars are put in a water bath and the water is brought to a boil. And this is done to preserve the food and keep it safe for eating. All the utensils, jars, and lids used in hot water canning have to be bathed in hot water to sterilize them and reduce bacteria. As the jar cools, the air contracts to help seal the jar and preserve the food. That's what causes the popping of the lid. The one thing to remember about home canned food is, if the lid doesn't pop, don't eat what's in the jar. It may be spoiled. I started it. Now let's create something fun. Ice cream. Yeah, making ice cream really isn't food preservation, but it involves both the physical and the chemical change, and it tastes great. Everybody knows you can make homemade ice cream with one of these. An ice cream freezer. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you, Gene, so much. I've always wanted one of these. But not everybody has one in their home. So here's how you can make ice cream without one and learn about weights and measures, too. All you need are two large but different sized plastic Ziploc-style freezer bags, ice, rock salt, a spoon, and a couple of towels or newspapers. Oops. Almost forgot the most important ingredients. Milk, sugar, and vanilla. Now the actual recipe is online at the website. Now we're ready to make some ice cream. First, you fill the large bag half full of the ice. Then measure the liquid and dry ingredients. Combine the milk, sugar, and vanilla in your small freezer bags. Squeeze out all the air and seal it. Put the small bag into the large bag with the ice. Add your salt. Squeeze out the air and seal the small bag into the big bag of ice and salt. This causes the chemical change, the salt interacting with the ice, which makes the ice cold enough to cause the physical change to turn the milk, sugar, and vanilla into bum, 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 ice cream. Now, wrap the bags in your towel or several layers of newspaper. Roll or shake the bag back and forth until your mixture thickens into ice cream. Pretty simple, huh? <laughs> ice cream. Now. All I need is some hot fudge, some nuts, and a little whipped cream. Freezing, drying, and canning. Three different ways to make your food last longer. I'm Chef Jim Belaya.